Okay guys, so I'm going to uh, show you how I tie my version of the combi link, um, which is basically a stiffer length of material with a bendy, sorry not bendy, but flexible uh, braid at the front. Um, so first of all, I'll show you the components that I use to tie that. Uh, first thing you really want is a really good pair of sharp braid blades, makes the job a lot easier. I use a puller tool to straighten it all out at the end. Um, I also use a crimper with this one, they're called a crimper to make my loop at the end. I use the Corda fluorocarbon boom for the stiff link, which is absolutely perfect. I played around on a lot of materials for this rig over the years and refined it. And this stuff is the one I find absolutely the best for it. Uh, we use the Nash Klingon uh, putty, which is in my opinion, the best stuff on the market. Length of medium shrink tubing, some Corda crimps in 0.6. It's very important to use the right size crimps for the boom, so for 0 0.55, 25 pound boom, you make sure you use the 0.6 crimps. You've got some small rig rings, and then just to finish the rig off, you've got some uh, anti-tangle sleeves. You can use whatever version you are, like the tungsten ones, not because they're tungsten and pin it down, but just because I find they're a bit stiffer and do the job a bit better. And then also we've got the ESP cryogen trig hammer hooks. Now you can use different patterns of hooks for this one. You can use wide gapes. Um, I use that with a slightly elongated bit of ring, rig tubing, but kind of like a noodle rig. Um, you can also use uh, cranks, which I've used in the past as well, or a good old fashioned curve shank, um, which works extremely well with it as well. If I was fishing a more snaggy situation, then I'd definitely go for a thicker wide curve shank or a wide gape hook, which has a stronger pattern. Um, obviously a long shank hook here is more likely to bend out under extreme pressure than other patterns of hooks. So if I, this is very much kind of an open water, clean situation where I'm not fi not feeling I'm going to get snagged up too much and not going to have to pull too hard on the fish. So right, without further ado, I'll show you how we tie this one. And the first thing we do is I take a length of the dark matter braid. So we'll pull that off. Fairly decent length because um, we're going to be shortening it a fair bit. So trim that off with the braid blades. Again, makes it nice and easy if they're really sharp um, and they don't tend to just uh, bruise the fiber, they actually cut straight through it. So we're gonna make a double overhand knot at the bottom to form the bottom of our hair. So the first thing we do is pinch that loop, make it nice and big so we can go over. So make the overhand, tuck through once, trying to keep the fibers all together. If you do that, it's a lot easier to keep the two circles together. And then tuck through a second time with a little bit of a pig's ear of that, but we got there in the end. Um, and then literally tighten that down to be fine, form the loop of the hair. Now I would say that hair loop is a little bigger than I would probably normally tie it, but that will be fine. So again, tighten that down. Trim it, no need to trim really tight because this bit's going to be inside a bait, so it's going to be nice and neat anyway. Um, and it just leaves a little bit of uh, slippage on the knot as well. I always like to leave a little bit just in case the knot slips when under tension or after a time. So there we go, that's it there. Now the next bit is a little bit slippery, but it's to attach one of our rig rings. So a little trick with these is to stop them spilling out all over the table, all over the floor. Just tip a couple down, but what you're gonna do is just lick the tip of your finger, make it wet to go in there, and then you can secure one of those rings and you can see it sticks to my finger. So put those rig rings out of the way and hopefully it'll stay sticking to my finger while I get the end of the thing, at the end of our hook length, and just literally put that through the middle of it and just tease that ring off and onto there. So you can see it's now sliding down. That saves you having to pick up rig rings from all over the floor. So now what I'm gonna do is secure the length of my actual hair. Now I wanna position the rig ring opposite the bar with the hook and down to the bottom end of the shank of the hook. So just roughly, because you can adjust the size of your hair. Now you can do that one of a couple of ways. This one's, you can either use one of the extender stops. I like a fairly decent length there. Now that's probably a bit shorter than I would normally tie. But again, I can extend that with an extender stop on the bottom and that'll make my give plenty of separation between the hook and my bait, and sorry, the hook and my bait. So, I've tied one overhand loop, I wanna make sure that I tie a second overhand loop. Should you need to shorten the hair, you can always tie a little overhand knot in it as well, which will actually save you having to tie a new rig. There we go. Again, making sure that the rig ring 
is stuck out. I don't know if I show that up here, whether that will pick it out, but you can see it's it's um, coming off the hair like that, so it's perfect. Now, the reason I tie a double overhand loop knot is simply to stop it from slipping. Once you've had a fish or the rig's been put under tension, you don't necessarily want to have to chuck it away every time. You might prefer to do that, but um, that keeps it nice and secure and in the right spot. So we'll put that one down, grab our packet of hooks. As you can see here, are the ESP Cryogen Trig Hammers. So you can hear that noise in the background, it's Bert having, turning over. Right, so first thing to do is just make sure that all the fibers are still fused together. So again, let your fingers just run it through there and make sure you write, and you can run it through the eye of the hook going this way. Oops. Let's just pop that through like that. And then you need to make sure that the rig ring goes around the right way. So you hold it opposite like that, bend it back on itself, slip the eye through, and then you can see the rig ring is sitting in the right position and not the other way around. It would be if you did it the opposite, if that makes any sense. So now I'm going to position that so it's opposite the barb of the hook, right on the bottom of the shank, just there. Now I'll pinch that with my fingers to make sure it's secure in the right place. And then I'm going to secure the knot with a knotless knot. So we're going to go around once, twice, three, four, five, six. And then hold it under tension with your other fingers. Again, smooth with a bit of saliva to make sure the fibres stick together. And you're going to go back through that way of the hook. Okay, this is where using braid can be tricky because it will sometimes fray, but that will pop through. And again, nice and quick like that, so that we've got our hook secured. Pull it down tight, make sure the line is following the back of the hook and the rig ring is in the right place. And that is the beginnings of our end bit. What we need to do now is add a bit of shrink tubing. Now for this rig with this hook, I'm not going to add too much. I'm literally going to add a bit to protect the knot, which is, again, might, some might say overkill, but it doesn't actually do any harm. It stops the knot from getting into any, any uh, contact, getting frayed or what have you. Again, wet the end of the braid. Just slip that on. Now, with a wide gape, for example, I would use a much longer length of hook and have it like almost like what they call a noodle rig. So sticking out the top, um, like I'm trying to make it like an old-fashioned bent hook, but a safe bent hook. So all I want to do here is just put that over top there, secure the knot, and I'm going to use that when I steam it under a kettle later, just to I put a slight more bit of a more aggressive angle in it, which helps the hook grab hold in the bottom lip usually. Well, hopefully in the bottom lip, if the mechanic's right. All right, so okay, that's the bottom half of it. So we're going to put that to one side, and now we're going to make the stiff link version, which is done with the quarter boom. So we strip off a length of that. Fairly, again, a fairly decent length. I want a decent length in my rig. Pop that to one side. And you can see this material is extremely springy. All it wants to do is spring apart the whole time, um, which is one of the reasons why I love it. Um, it is uh, perfect for this rig, in my opinion. Um, other fluorocarbons are good, but they're not as flexible. This is very good for use over flat ground where I anticipate, or I think the ground where I'm putting my rig is fairly clean, fairly uh, free of, not necessarily free of low-lying weed and things, but definitely free of higher weed, because this will stick up a little bit like that. And that's not what you want. It won't fold over things like a softer hook link. So you know, it's something to bear in mind when using this. It is very much a rig for using over cleaner ground. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to form a loop. So the loop is like that. And you can see I pinched it with my other finger. It does want to spring out, so you do have to keep it um, all secured with your thumb like that. So the first thing we do is come up through the bottom of the rig, and I oh sorry, and I'm going to take that all the way to the shank of the hook, like that. And I'm going to pinch the shank, the, the top of the rig tubing, pinch it on the top of the loop there with my other finger, and then we have to be quite dexterous, and we're going to whip this round seven times. So once twice, three times, four, six, and lastly around seven. Right, once I've done seven, I'm gonna pinch it with these fingers, let go of the hook, because I can, and then I'm gonna come back the other way, so down the knot. So I'm gonna go once, 
twice, three times, and when we drop that through, the same way that we came up, that's very important. If you go the other way, they're not what I'm do. And then we'll just do that. And then I'm gonna take this off camera and give it a bit of moisture. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna physically slide that knot down, let go of the tag end, because I wanna lose, a, want it to lengthen off a bit and slacken off a bit and then pull the two things together like that. And there we have our combi link. Now you can have this at various different lengths depending on what you're trying to achieve. Um, so you don't necessarily have to have it as short as that. You can have it a little bit longer. The reason I've gone a little bit short is it's a little bit more of a long, um, let me see that's gone around there, so sorry. I'll see it's a little bit more of a um, long shank style hook. So I've got a bit more depth for it to be there. So it doesn't need to necessarily be quite as long on the actual combi bit there. So. Now, I'm going to take this off camera again because I'm going to get this in my mouth and pull it tight. So I'll grab the tag end in my mouth. And then just pull the two things tight. Right, when I'm trimming this knot down, I'm not going to trim it ever so tight. So there. I should explain actually what this knot is called as well. This knot is an Albright knot and it is perfect for joining two types of material that are different in their structure. Or different in their kind of um, in their line strength as well so I'm going to trim that down again I'm not going to trim too tight because I'm going to cover this bit with a bit of putty and I want to allow for any slippage on it as well especially with the, the braid bit of it make sure that you don't cut through the bit that you've just tied so you have to end up doing the whole thing again and there we go that looks doesn't look particularly neat but when I fold that up with the putty over the top that will look absolutely fine and you won't see any bit and it'll just sit nicely as well so right that is essentially the rig as we can see now we've got to put the finishing touches to it and the last things that I will use there are the dark well in this case the cord of dark matter oh, tungsten uh, what are these things called again anti-tangle tubes sorry so we'll slip one of those on okay and that goes down onto there and then we can form the end of the rig, which is done with the crimp. So you can see the quarter crimps here. Just shake one of those out again. I'll reiterate, these are the 0.6 ones, so they're perfect to use with the boom. And then we slide these. We've got two little holes in them. We won't be able to see it on camera, it's too tiny. But there's two holes and a, a kind of a bridge in the middle. You push into one of the holes. And then I'm going to make this into a loop, because I use these and connect them to a Q-sit or a quick chain swivel. So I can just hook on a new rig when I'm ready to go, um, or I can take the rig off if I want to do some leading around, etc. and I don't want to blunt the hook. Um, and it's very, very versatile, and it's very, very strong as well. So I'll just do that. Right, and as you can see, I formed a loop. Now, I don't want that loop to be too big. It doesn't need to be. So I'll tie it down when I've got the right length of rig that I want. That's about right, and that'll easily hook over, and then I'll pull up the quick... Anti, the uh, anti-tangle sleeve, which will stop it from uh, coming loose or slipping off the end of the swivel. Now, this is the bit with the pliers that you have to remember. The quarter crimper, sorry for that, I just shook the camera, um, has an S and an L, and it's a small and a large. Now, this one is obviously a small crimp, so you want to put that in there so that it sits upright, so you can hold it in and it sits perfectly in the groove like that. And then when you've done that, you've got one bit in the bottom, one bit in the top, and you make sure that you then crimp it nice and tight like that. That's what I've done. And then I'm gonna remove it now. And you can see that it's now compressed it, but it won't have damaged the material at all. So the thing now to do, again, is to trim or not. Now, again, I don't wanna trim this too tight, so I'm gonna show you a little trick I do with it as well. And trim it like that. Now, you might think that's rather excessive, but what I'm going to do is just for a bit of extra assurance, as I try not to set fire to my camera, is I'm going to blur and blunt, um, blob the end, sorry, with a with a lighter. So I'll just run that down. I should have cut it a bit tighter, really, but we'll do it. We'll do it like this, trying desperately not to burn the other material. So you can see that's blobbed over there. Now, should that slip, hopefully that bit will just catch on the end of the, the crimp 
and we'll give you an extra bit of insurance not, not cutting loose. But then what we do with this is I slide up the anti-tangle sleeve, tuck the knob inside, and then we'll just pull that up like that. And then when I go to attach that to my swivel, I'll just slip that over the swivel, pull that up, and that will sit nice and tightly. And that will do one of two things. That will secure it and stop it from stop it from uh, falling off. But the one thing it does is this rig, the reason I like this rig so much is it always wants to do that. It always wants to push away from the lead, lay flat. This bit can lay in a different angle, but the fish has got very little movement before it actually picks up the lead and actually comes into contact, hopefully with your hook point, and that pulls it home. So it's designed to always be fishing because we get picked up and spat out an awful lot more than probably most people appreciate. And if this picks up, if the fish then drops it and doesn't get hooked, it will kick away from the lead every time um, and it will lay flat. So it's always going to do that on a lake bed. And that's why I really, really like it. I will, to finish this rig, I will steam it, um, steam it straight under a kettle. I'll probably steam it before I send it out as well because it does have a tendency to do that and curve a little bit over time. If you steam it straight before you send it out, it'll do that. And also that would help me secure, um, I'll shrink down the shrink tube on the end. Um, but the other thing I'll do to it, and I'll show you how to do now, is I'll just add a little bit of putty. Oops, sorry. So unscrew our putty. Now this stuff is the Nash Klingon. Um, I think this is the best putty on the market. Um, it's, it's suitable, it's heavy enough. It's not as heavy as some of them, but it doesn't come off and it sticks like well, glue basically. So you put that on, nice big blob of it like that, flatten it, and then I fold the two sides up over the top, and then just mold that round with my fingers. And I can see I've got a nice, fairly neat blob of putty. And again, this helps in my opinion to get the rig down and make it heavy and drop it into the bottom lip of the, the fish. Um, but also accentuates that whole thing about throwing it away from the lead. Um, you can add a kick like a sinker halfway down, but actually, to be honest, I don't think it does um, an awful lot more for the rig. Um, as long as you steam it out straight, I think it works. So I'm just going to go and steam that now, and then I'll bring it back and show you the end result. And here we go, guys, and just show you the finished rig. And I've just popped a boilie on the end of it there. Don't be afraid, guys, to have a little bit more separation between boilie and hook. I often see uh, baits really, really tight, and it seems to be a fad to get your bait as tight to the hook as possible. That hair will work a little bit better with a bit of, bit of length on it. You can see the shrink tubing is done, and it's slightly kicked over at the top to just uh, give it a bit more aggression. Um, and then you can see there's a bit of flexibility at the end of the rig. But the majority of it is nice and stiff and will kick away and then you can see how I've looped on at the end there. And that guys is my version of a combi rig.